from WFSB, this is an Eyewitness News Update. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us on your Monday. Today is April 1st. I'm Caitlin Francis. We're following some developing news out of Wallingford. One person was taken to the hospital after a crash on 91 southbound overnight. Police say that crash happened about 1.20 this morning. They're describing that victim's injuries as serious. Again, 91 southbound was closed. Right at exit 14, as crews investigated, it is back open at this time. And we are working to learn more about a violent crime in Torrington. Police tell us someone was stabbed. Someone stabbed a man multiple times on Main Street last night. As soon as we learn any more information, we'll share it with you right away here on air and the WFSB app. A woman is facing DUI charges after police say she drove straight into a business in Norwich. Take a look at this photo here. The crash happened last night on West Main Street. Investigators say the driver was on the eastbound side when she lost control, drifted over into the westbound lane. She then hit a, a bus stop, a pole, and then careened into the building there. The bus stop is now closed because of the damage. Fortunately, though, no one was seriously hurt. In Hartford, a man accused of stealing a car and abducting a three-year-old boy inside of the vehicle is set to face a judge today. 52-year-old Vadim Vorovyov of Springfield is accused of taking a red Camry from a parking lot in Chicopee, Massachusetts, driving it over the state line here into Connecticut while the owner's three-year-old son was sitting in the back seat. Police say that man eventually let the boy out at a hotel in East Windsor before investigators tracked him down at a gym in Windsor and arrested him there. He is facing several charges, including kidnapping and larceny. State police are still trying to piece together a deadly crash that happened late Saturday night on 91 southbound. Three vehicles crashed into each other just north of exit 22 in Rocky Hill. One of them veered across the highway into a guardrail. A man in that vehicle was pronounced dead at the scene. Everyone else involved is expected to be okay. Investigators are still trying to figure out what sparked a fire in the Taftville neighborhood of Norwich. Crews rushed to the scene on Fontaine Court last night. The Taftville Fire Department and the Norwich Fire Department teamed up to help contain that fire. Now at this point, it's unclear if anyone was hurt, but we expect an update on this later this morning. We'll keep you posted. A Hartford family is without a home this morning after a massive fire hit their building on Brookfield Street. Officials sent us this photo that we're going to take a look at of the damage from yesterday's fire. Firefighters knocked down the flames on two separate floors. Now the good news, no one was hurt. The Red Cross is also helping that family find somewhere to stay while investigators try to determine what caused that fire. Right now in Bridgeport, police are investigating a quadruple shooting there. Two people were killed, two others hurt in a horrific blast of violence there. Our Pinpoint News Tracker showing us that scene right near the intersection of Stratford Avenue and Logan Street. Police rushed out there late Saturday night, found three victims who had been shot. A fourth person took uh, themselves to the hospital a short time later. Two of the victims died. The other two are, again, are in stable condition this morning. At this point, no arrests have been made. Five people are facing criminal charges in Hartford in connection to an attempted street takeover that happened Saturday night right near Keeney Park. Police say there were around 100 ATVs driving recklessly. They also found a gun and then seized four of those vehicles. More ATVs and dirt bikes were seen riding around the area yesterday as well. Mike. Kate, this morning we saw an update on the excessive rainfall outlook for Wednesday, placing most of southern Connecticut in that level one outlook, meaning we're expecting yet another round of substantial rainfall as we get a little bit later into the week. We'll break this down for you on First Alert Futurecast. Here's Wednesday morning. We have this low in the Great Lakes with an occluded front draped across uh, western New York and Pennsylvania with a secondary area of low pressure developing. And this is going to be the storm that we have to keep an eye on. As uh, it moves closer to us on Wednesday, rain will develop and become steady, if not heavy at times. Wind gusts will pick up too. And as it moves away from us on the back side of it, we actually see some colder air get entrained, and that's going to help to transition the higher elevations over to a bit of wintry mix or snow. There's the low parked just to our east late Thursday and even into Friday. It's still nearby, and that's going to be a, a very slow departure, keeping things chilly and unsettled as we wrap up the work week. So our first alert Wednesday into Thursday really focused on rain, wind, and the snow at elevation impacting travel and perhaps renewing the flood risk. We're talking another inch and a half to two and a half inches of rainfall across parts of Connecticut by the time all is said and done. And this is all falling atop our saturated soil. 7.99 inches of rain. That is the second wettest March on record 
for the Hartford area. We have been breaking these top five wettest month records uh, quite a bit over the last year, and uh, that certainly has been reflected in the amount of rain that we've seen and the fact that every time we get these heavy rain events, we deal with a renewed flood risk. Now, over the last six hours locally, we've been tracking some rain to our southwest, otherwise cloudy for us. Here's a live look in our ICAM and touring to really not much to chat about right now. A live look in our ICAM New Haven showing very similar conditions. 45 degrees in the Elm City this morning. Winds are out of the north northeast at five miles an hour. And along the shoreline, we'll see temperatures today top out in the lower 50s. Inland is where we are expecting some mid 50s to be in the mix away from the shoreline as that onshore wind develops just a little bit milder there. But then tomorrow we're expecting highs statewide to mostly be in uh, the 40s. It's going to be tough to really break into that uh, 50 degree range. Maybe a couple of spots touch 50 briefly, but given the increasing clouds, increasing northeast winds and the developing scattered showers again, tough to really get there. But it does mean that as we bring more rain through the middle of this week, we'll start to see our pollen counts drop back a bit Monday and Tuesday today and tomorrow the highest falling back on Wednesday given that steady rain. So again, today we're in the 50 to 55 degree range tonight. We'll see some 30s to around 40 degrees and on the first Lord seven day forecast, we're expecting temperatures later this week to be running uh, below average, especially Wednesday feeling raw out there Wednesday. The rain, the wind in the wintry uh, in the hills, rather a bit of wintry mix or even some snow temperatures in the lower half of the 40s. There's the first Lord Wednesday to Thursday. Rain and snow showers continue on Thursday, still feeling cool and raw out there later this week. By Friday, isolated showers, breezy, and then Saturday, uh, we'll see temperatures right near 50 degrees, topping out 50 to 55 by Sunday. We ended up with a trace of snow officially for the Hartford area for the month of March. Typically, we would see 9.4 inches of snow, and it is worth mentioning that in April, we tend to see just over an inch of snow for the Hartford area. We'll see uh, exactly if that comes to fruition or not. Something that we can tell you, though, is the silver lining in all of this is the slow evolution of this storm system it means that we have a greater chance of high pressure next Monday the day of the eclipse models in pretty good agreement that we actually see mostly sunny skies. So while this week will be unsettled, we have that first alert Wednesday into Thursday. Kate, all eyes are certainly on the weekend into the start of next week. And so far it's looking pretty favorable for the eclipse. Great news, Mike. Thank you. And thank you so much for tuning in here to Eyewitness News. Remember, you can get your news and weather updates anytime on the WFSB app as we leave with a beautiful view outside our iCam in Old Saybrook. Have a great day.